So why are dragons weak against ice? Something I kind of thought about for a while, and I think I figured it out. Well, you know, dragons are reptiles. They're really strong creatures, but the, the cold catches up to them. You know, like, for example, like a dragonite's, like, super effective and quadruple damage against ice attacks, like a Lapras, for example. Um, plus, Lapras gets a stab bonus for every ice attack that it implements damage with, so it would be interesting to see how that would carry that out. But what I think is really interesting is the reason why a lot of dragons are weak against ice is because, technically speaking, their body, you know, they can get too cold and it slows them down frigidly. So therefore, it acts like a, it's like an, it's elements is what it is. You know, kind of like, you know, I mean, unless you're like a special dragon type, like, you know, like say Charmander is like a fire salamander, but it's still nonetheless a lizard that turns into a... So I think it's really interesting that, you know, Pokemon like that can still... They, they can be fire types, but, I mean, have, do we have, like, ice dragons in Pokemon? I can't remember. I don't think so. But if we do, then I take it back. But it's really interesting to think, like, I mean, you, you could even have, like, a fire dragon type, such as... Oh, no, no, we do have ice dragons. Kurium. What am I thinking? Um, yeah, it's just really interesting how they did that, though. You know, really cool... Was it an ice dragon type, or was it just a dragon type? Yeah, no, it was an ice dragon and I just think it's really cool. You know, they have like, you know, a lot of Pokemon are really weak against something, but at the same time, even Pokemon that don't have resistance, or even like there's a science that the golden rule of Pokemon was always like it had to make sense somehow. And that does make a lot of sense when you think about it. Like dragons are mythical creatures. Kind of like how there's no light type, you know, but they, they came out with fairy types instead. And those Pokemon are still in their own way, a powerful uh, Pokemon to really apprehend some of the Pokemon that they, they catch on with. I just think that's really cool, though. Like, how many different things about Pokemon we haven't even thought of, all the different type advantages, and, you know, like, scientifically, why does it make sense? Kind of interesting how, like, go, like if we think about, like, poison types, and then, you know, we have ghost types over time. Or was it, or was it just poison types? Yeah, poison types. It's really interesting, actually. Yeah, ghost, yeah, ghost types. Like Shadow Ball and all that was a ghost type move. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, basically all Pokemon games, they, they all have, like, some kind of connection one way or another to, like, the supernatural or some kind of uh, elemental uh, matter in existence and all of existence. And I just think it's really cool. As far as Pokemon's gone, like, we, we've been able to figure this stuff out as time goes on. Like, why, you know, like, the scales on a dragon can uh, really freeze them. And then they uh, slow down and pass away because their body goes into like cryogenic status. Liquid nitrogen levels of cold. And it's just really interesting to think how they figured that one out in uh, the series. Kind of makes me wonder though, how many other type advantages could they have if we, you know, I mean, because it's really interesting. Like a dragon, the dragons can tank just about anything as far as elementals go, but there's certain things that slow them down though. Even fairy types are completely immune to dragon type moves now. So that's actually really interesting, like how that actually works. So fairies really do work in like a, a good way, but then you have the dark types, which are, you know, they punish the dark types and the dark types are, you know, it's not really effective against them in a way. So it, it kind of does make you think like all the things we don't see in Pokemon that exist right in front of us and how many things that we don't even know about that have yet to be discovered. That, that's what I want to know as far as like the lost history, the lost lore, or even just the stuff that just, you know, oversimplifies something to the point where it would have to make sense somehow that the Pokemon themselves would then become something far greater. So, so hopefully this kind of explains it a little bit better, but yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense. Dragons are supposed to be reptiles, and reptiles don't like, for the most part, don't like the cold. So if that is true, and they're not like taking the Charmander approach where they're like a, a flame lizard or a salamander in this case, then they are basically not going to be immune to the cold. They would have to be very, very, very... Um, it would have to be, like, it would have to overturn them very well. Because, like, if, again, Charmander's flame goes out, kills them instantly. So Charmander would probably be more scared of water than it would be scared of ice. But that ice could melt into water, so it kind of makes you wonder, though. But Charmander, you know, po most Pokemon aren't fire types, so... And they're not mag cargo either, where it's basically immune to fi fire or flames and from, from the flames and all that, so... You know, most dragon types are just dragons, so they're not, they're like mystical and mythical and whatnot, but 
Where do they go next? How many Pokemon, how many dragons do we even have? We, I don't know, I wonder how many more dragon types we can even come up with, but yeah, anyways. So yeah, subscribe if you're not already. And if I find something else that I, we don't know about, I'll, I'll make a video about it because this is interesting stuff.